Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome back to the second episode of the Buffalo Sabres BGM. So, episode one was breaking down the roster, but before we get into everything, I want to make sure to let you guys know that I do read all your comments and I've gone through the entire list of things and looked at all the possibilities, okay, to see what we might be able to do. Now, also before we get into things, make sure you guys like the video, okay? That lets me know that you guys want to see more. Let's, wow, that was retarded. That lets me know that you guys want to see more of this, all right? Don't forget to comment as we go along. I find that when I'm watching videos myself, I'll think of a comment, but I wait till the end to put the comment, and then I forget what it is. So put the comment now as you go. Comment throughout the video, and then at the end, you can put another comment if you want. There's no limit to how many comments you can put. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter at TargetOdd18. That's where I like to communicate the most with my fans. So, here's the thing. Everybody's complaining about making the game more realistic, making this thing more realistic. Now, every single year when a team takes to the NHL, what's the number one goal? It's a very simple answer. It's to win the Stanley Cup every year. So, as the Buffalo Sabres, we want to win the Stanley Cup. And what we want to do is we want to ice a team that gives us the best chance of doing that. Now, as the year goes along, that's when you determine whether or not your team is actually a competitive playoff <clears throat> competitive ugh, competitive playoff team or if they're rebuilding. Now, right now, looking at our roster, many of us would agree that we are a rebuilding team. There's no doubt about it. You know, you got too many good prospects and too few top end players. You know, and our best player is Matt Molson. You've got a problem, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can't be a competitive team. So we are trying to be the best, the best team in the NHL this year with what we have. All right. So that's number one. All right. Now, number two is at the trade deadline. That's where we're going to determine whether we're going to be continuing to push for a playoff spot or if we're going to be trading for picks. That's basically renting players out at the draft. Now, that's something that I want to do almost every single year. Determine whether we are a playoff team, whether we're making a playoff push, and what we're going to be doing with those picks. Now, this year, if I go to trade negotiations and I show you how many picks we have available to us, three first-round picks. we got Buffalo, New York, and St. Louis. So if either of those teams two Either, either of those two teams tank the season, we're in a good place. We don't have a third right now, but we got three first round picks. Now, in our lineup, we're missing two key things. Number one is a top end goalie. We don't have that right now. We don't have anybody coming up that's actually going to push to be a four and a half star goalie. We also don't have a four and a half star prospect defenseman. So those are two things I'd like to address with those picks is to find a four and a half star defenseman and find a four and a half star goaltender so that we don't have to worry about anything in the future. All right, so for now, I think we're going to keep our team as is. I am going to go to free agency and see who sits there right now, because every now and then there's something. Yeah, Yoni Pitkinen, Ian White, Dustin Penner. These are guys that can fill out the lineup, make us competitive, and also give us an opportunity to win games. Now, also we've got, you know, look at Andre Lokjanov. 80 overall, playmaker, three and a half yellow stars. He could get up there. You've also got... Philip Larson, three and a half yellow stars. He could get up there too. Those are the guys we'd want to add to our roster. All right. And then goaltenders. I don't know if there's anybody good. Uh, Makarov, he's only three and a half red stars, so he's not great. Overall, Tim Thomas. All right. Tim Thomas is in there too. He only wants one year. So we can add a couple of these players here that make us more competitive. So let's see what we can give. First things first, let's look at our roster or our, our line. Actually, let's do roster moves. Let's go to roster moves. Let's get our, our team set up first, okay? So, make sure everybody's up. Uh, Pissick is a top six, so we're going to call him up. Nope, oh, hold on. Too many. We're going to send Flynn down. We're going to send Delorier down. Uh, we're going to send uh, Nikita. Oh, we got to wait. Hold on. We're going to call up Pissick. We're going to send down Zadorov. And uh, oh, we're going to send him to juniors. There you go. And I don't know if that's anybody. Can we send Ristolina down? No, we gotta, we gotta, we'd have to call somebody up. So we're gonna go edit lines, <coughs> best lines. All right, so this is how they th things set. Oh, they got wrist aligned, so we need a forward. We need to call up a forward. So first things first, let's call up that forward. Let's get that into position. There you go, Luke Adam. All right, and then we'll send. Uh, then we can send a defenseman down, which is wrist aligned. Depth defenseman is that the worst? Yeah, let's send wrist aligned down. Okay, there we go. So we'll edit our lines again. 
best lines. All right, so Luke Adams there, McCormick, Coletta, a grinder, two grinders, and a power forward. Actually, Adam Luke Adams got pretty good faceoffs, doesn't he? 77. So what's McCormick got that he's playing center? 70. Oh, okay, 77. All right, not worried about it. Okay, on defense, George's Myers, Mazaros, Pissick, Weber, and Benoit. That's not bad. That's not bad. And then on in the minor system, we're gonna do best lines. We got Grigorenko, Flynn, and Armia. None of the and Larson. He's another good solid prospect coming up through the system at all uh, as well. So we're gonna put him on the top line there. I'd like to give him an opportunity. Um, William Carrier is another good option. But we got a lot of good guys down in the minor system. We're just lacking that top end talent. <coughs> okay, so. There's the, 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 the line set up now. We can take a look and see where we're missing. Now, fourth line is not great. There's nobody really great there. Uh, if we go to defense, we could actually add another defenseman. Like here, for example, Andre Benoit. He could go. So we could add two defensemen here, and all of a sudden, Mazaros and Pissick as our bottom two. Not so bad. Not so bad at all, okay? And then, actually, I'm going to switch Ennis and Anderson. And then we could actually add, if we wanted to, because Felino's probably considered a fourth line forward, maybe third line, I'm not sure. Marcus Felino could play the fourth line. Or Tony, Tory, uh, uh, Terry, is it Tory? Tory Mitchell. He could actually get the boot, if we wanted to, or play him on the fourth line, if we sign a winger. So there's a couple free agents available to us. Now, that's what I want to go out and do. we got $13 million to spend. All right. We are going to sign a couple players because that's what we want to do is be a competitive team year in and year out. No GM goes into a year and says, we are tanking this season. No, nobody says that. All right. So we want to make this as realistic possible. So these guys only want one year. Yoni Pitkinen and Ian White. Yoni Pitkinen, offensive defenseman, brings pretty good numbers. He put up only nine points in 22 games last year, 17 and 30 the year before. If he stays healthy, we'll be okay. Ian White, he is a, oh, hold on. I forgot to go to the player information. Ian White is a two-way defenseman, not bad, brings some decent numbers to the game as well, 32 points two years ago, and then Dustin Penner is a forward, you also got Talinder, but these are the only two top four guys that actually qualify as top two, so let's go ahead and get these guys signed, alright, 4.6 is what Yoni Pitkinen wants, so let's give Yoni Pitkinen 4.6, and then we've got Ian White, who wants 4.7, so let's go ahead and give him 4.7 for one year. Dustin Penner, why not? Let's give our guys the best chance possible to win games. He's 83 overall power forward. Nothing to laugh at. Let's go ahead and grab Dustin Penner. There you go. Now, I also want to look at those forwards. You've got Lokchanov and Larson. These guys could pot potentially compete for roster spots at a later date. So he wants one year at 1.375. Let's give him the 1.375. And Philip Larson... You know what? We'll wait. We'll wait a couple days because I don't know how many contracts we actually have uh, signed at the moment. So let's sim a little bit here. Uh, let's sim up to the 23rd here. That'll give us the possibility of signing players. Pardon me. Oh, and scouting. I got to do some scouting here. I don't expect us to have many. Oh, there you go. I don't expect us to have many wins. All right. Oh, Chow. For Oh, look at that. I forgot to tell you guys. I added some players to the draft. Look at that. Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel. I basically put Jack Eichel and Noah Hannafin. They play on the same junior team or the same uh, college team. So I put them in the game now. They're in there to be drafted. Noah Hannafin and Jack Eichel. Those are guys that are going to be huge for us. We've also got, look at this. you got a couple top tens. Uh, Dylan Strom, Konesny, Zaka. These are guys that are, Kraus. These are guys that are going to go in the first round. So I added them to the, to the game. Jack Eichel and Noah Hannafin. Uh, they're both on the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds because I felt that they would be very similar players. So we're going to scout the forwards for six weeks. There's a lot in the OHL, guys. Hold on. I'm just going to move my mic. There is a lot in the OHL, so we need to go ahead and make sure we take advantage of that. Let's get that amateur scout up, and I guess that's good enough for now. Uh, the other thing I need to do is turn off injuries. I don't want to get hurt. I know. Everybody says play with injuries, but you, the only thing is, here's the only thing when it comes to injuries is that it slows the game down so much. That's the only reason I don't play with injuries on. All right? Now, something we will do, and I'll put in the, I'll leave it open to debate in the, in the comments section, is do we open up injuries in the playoffs? Is that something you guys would like to see happen? Because during the year, it just slows the game down. That's it. I don't care about playing with injuries. I don't care about calling guys up. It's just every five seconds, it seems like you're going to be calling a guy up, editing, editing lines. It slows the game down so much when really... 
as soon as the season gets going, you guys want to get to the deadline. As soon as the deadline's done, you want to get to the playoffs. And as soon as the playoffs are done, you want to get to the draft and then free agency. And then there's always something to look forward to. It's You don't really look forward to filling the void of injured players. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. I may be way off, may be way off base, but I feel that that's the way the, that everybody feels. So I'm just going to keep simming without injuries on. Let's see how we do. We may win. We may lose. Oh, uh, so we are full. So we we don't have enough peep enough room to take any of these players. So that's it. I guess we're going with what we've got here. That's that's the way it is. I mean, we could trade away some players if we want to. If we go to uh, trade negotiations, trade players, we could trade away a few players that aren't very good. Um, let's see here. Let's go by the guys that have the lowest potential and that are signed, like Dupuy. Who wants Dupuy? Anybody? There you go. Uh, Arizona wants him. They would trade him for a fifth round pick. No, they can't afford him. I'd like to get rid of him for a pick. I'd like to get rid of this guy for a pick. Uh, Columbus for a pick for a fifth. There you go. Oh, wow. In wo woefully insufficient for a fifth. All right. How about a sixth? How about a seventh? There he goes for a seventh. All right. Um, there you go. We got a couple guys we can send them. But let's move along. Dallas. Draft position, uh, a fourth? That could go. Nope, we gotta go for a fifth. Nope, a sixth? A seventh? Oh my god. Alright, we're just getting rid of some guys. I'd like to get rid of four, so we can get those guys signed. Give ourselves a be the best opportunity. Because no one's gonna play Kia, Joe Kia. Uh, two and a half, red star, to f or grinder, pardon me, Olofsson, oh, Olofsson. Uh, Kia. Oh, wrong one. I'm, I'm confused here right now. <laughs> Let's see what Olofsson's about. Three red star sniper. Okay, let's see if Kia, we can ship the two of them off to someplace. Edmonton. Draft picks. Let's get a fourth and a seventh from them. I think this will go through. Nope. We would take Victor Olofsson if you decided to try again. So let's take Kia off. Kia. Let's take the seventh off. Nope, not a fourth. Fifth. Sixth. There you go. We got rid of Cole Olofsson. And we need one more player to get rid of. Uh, Kia. Minnesota. A fourth. Okay, let's let's send one more player their way because I'd like to pick up another player. Let's send them Austin. I don't know that he's going to have much of a... Yeah, exactly. These are the guys you want to get rid of. Oh, not Flynn. Austin. There you go. For a fourth. Boom. Nice. Um, is anybody willing to get rid of a third? There you go. Montreal. Let's go to skaters matching block. Nobody that we want to get rid of. Nashville, they want to get rid of any prospects. They want to get rid of the third. Uh, skaters getting... Uh, skaters they want to get rid of? No. Okay. So that's good enough for me. I think that's probably enough. We can go out and sign those players again. So let's go to free agency. I know. I know. This is taking a little bit of time to get going. Uh, Dustin Penner... Oh, hold on. I forgot to appear offline. Hold tight. Uh, online status. Sorry about this, boys. Forget about that kind of stuff. Yoni Pitkinen, 4.5. Sure, we'll sign you. And Ian White, 4.7. We'll sign you. We also had uh, Dustin Penner. They've got one team interested. Arizona. Let's give Dustin Penner 2.8. He should sign with us at 2.8. That's more than enough money for him. And then that top player. Oh, there he was. Lock Sean off. There you go, 1.365. There you go. So let's uh, we'll go out of here because we can't sim a day. It's gonna take a couple more, a couple days to get these guys signed. Uh, let's go up to here. That should be good. Oh, GM negotiation dropped. Um, actually, let's take a look at it because right now the the numbers doesn't take much to jump up. Nothing right now. All right. So right now we're two zero and oh, three zero and zero. Oh, scratch that. So we're having a good preseason. So we got Dustin Penner signed. So we'll be able to put him in the lineup, and there you go. Okay, hold on. We'll go to coaching options. Ross, uh, actually, yeah, we'll go to we'll go coaching options. We'll go to outlines. Roster moves. All right, who's down in the in the minors? Uh, Dustin Penner. All right, we're gonna send down a left winger. Well, you know what, Patrick Coletta is terrible. Uh, you know what, T well, Tori Mitchell is considered a depth, and so is Gergen. Gergensen is considered a depth. Uh, he's playing this year. Uh, let's send down, let's send down Tory Mitchell. All right, let's go to edit lines now. Let's do best lines again. 
Alright, I'm going to switch Ennis and Hodgson. I just feel like Hodgson will do better on that top line with Molson and Strafford. And then a power forward, sniper, playmaker. That's a good combo. And then power forward, two-way forward, power forward. Uh, Dustin Penner, Gergensons, and Felino. We'll see how this goes. Alright, that makes us a little bit more round, that's for sure. Alright, we're going to get those two defensemen too. Alright, we're going to get those two defensemen as well. Right away. So we got Ian White. We got Yoni Pitkinen, and we got Andre Lakjanov. So that'll give us another couple players to add to the lot of the roster here. So GM options. Let us go to roster moves. All right, we're gonna call those boys up. Okay, Ian White, Yoni Pitkinen, and then we're gonna send down. Let's go to defense, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's send down Weber, and let's send down Benoit. All right, and then we'll edit the lines. Best lines and honest head. There you go. So Yoni Pitkin and Ian White now become our one-two combo. We could put Ian White on the top line and put him with uh, Myers, or we could put, and then that would be Georges and Pitkin. And not a bad. Oh, pardon me about that. Uh, not a bad combination. And then Mazaros and Pits, uh, Pissick. Not a bad defensive core, guys. Not bad at all. Uh, power play looks okay. I'm not going to worry about that too much. And we'll continue our sim. So really, it's not going to be so much about making sure we do really well this year. I think it's about giving ourselves the best chance, right? You guys want realism. So what we're going to deliver is realism, all right? And uh, if that means, you know, trading at the deadline for a, a top-end player, that's what it means. Because we're 5-1-0 right now. But I find that when teams start really strong in the preseason... They don't do very well long term. All right. So we're going to continue. We are going to get this season rolling, guys. Going to get the season rolling. The Buffalo Sabres 2014-2015 season is underway. Let's see what we can do. I don't think that we're going to be a playoff team. We don't have enough players in place to be that playoff team. But you know what? We could have a really good year. We've got a couple guys signed that could be nice additions that help us, give us some depth. But... Long term, we're not going to have that ability. Now, what we want to add through the draft is a couple players that will be effective long term as well. A goalie, maybe a top end forward. Uh, we'll see what we can get out of the draft, right? Because it's about making sure that we be the best team that we can and also making sure we provide the most realistic experience because that seems to be what most people ask for is realism. So we're not going to make any ridiculous trades. We're not going to make any ridiculous signings. We're not going to be, you know trading at the draft for that top pick necessarily they have to want to get rid of it they have to want to get rid of that pick and the players going back in return they have to want all right at the deadline we're not going to be making deals for young players that are you know 86 overall four and a half yellow stars ready to jump up unless that team wants to get rid of them we're only going to make players for veteran guys or trades for veteran players guys that they want to get rid of all right, that's the type of team we are going to ice this year. And that's the type of management system that I'm going to incorporate into the year. Right now, we're 6-2-2. Two, and two. Let's see how we do against Boston. 6-2-3. and three. Like, we've done really, really well so far. And we actually probably sit near the top of the standings. Uh, stats, we're probably not going to be up there for any of this. Uh, goals, no, of course not. Assists, no, of course not. But points, we're actually... In tied for sec uh, tied for fourth place in the NHL in points. So not bad. We're tied for first in the Eastern Conference. So let's see how another month goes. Now remember, like I said, we are going to be a competitive team. That's what we wanted to do. That's what we want to put forward as a team that can push for the Stanley Cup. Now, if we don't get there, we don't get there. I'm not going to cry about it because if we make the playoffs, it's going to be a happy surprise, right? That's what it's about. All right. Uh, let's take a look at our scouting in the OHL went. All right, so you got uh, tons. Kinesny, McDavid, Zaka, Kraus, Marner, and Eichel. Uh, if we go defense, we're going to scout the defense here. We'll scout that for we'll scout that for a month. All right, we'll get that going. Keep the sim alive. <coughs> so you're not going to see too many crazy moves, right? You're not going to see us trading for huge goalies unless the player teams want to get rid of those goalies. Those, I think, are what people are talking about with the realistic trades, right? If I'm wrong, correct me whenever I say any of this stuff. But that's what you guys are talking about with realistic trades. Actually, I want to turn on assistant coach edit lines because that is off right now. If it'll stop simming. We've actually done really, really well so far. Wow, we've done really, really well. Okay, let's go to uh, customize. I believe it's under settings and rules. Assistant coach, uh, cycle lines, and cycle goalies. Uh, on. 
and rotate goalies on. There we go. Now they'll make the necessary adjustments that we need. All right. Okay, so let's keep the sim going. Nine, four, and three, guys. We are doing really well for a team. Oh, quiet, boy. For a team that actually has absolutely no talent whatsoever. Well, not I shouldn't say no talent, but doesn't have much great talent at all. We're doing really, really well. I mean, yeah, we're losing some games, but we're winning quite a few games so far. You know, enough to take the Eastern Conference. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what to say right now. Considering the Edmonton Oilers, how difficult a time we had. Stop it, Boyd. How difficult a time we had at icing a strong team. Uh, even though the players were actually really good, it makes no sense. But that's okay. It is what it is. Um, we'll be a good, better team for it at the end of this year. We'll have a better idea of where we're going. And at the trade deadline, we'll have a good idea of what we, what kind of a team we're going to be in the next couple episodes. Right? That's basically what it's going to be. We'll have a better idea of what, how, like, what kind of team we are at the deadline, what kind of team we're going to be at the draft. I think it's going to be a good year for for prospects, and I agree. It's going to be a great year for prospects. So anywhere in the top 10, you're getting that four and a half star player, I think. I mean, judging from previous experience, we're getting a lot of high end talent in that first top 10, in that top 10. So I'd like to have a couple picks in the top 10. We'll see how things go. We've lost a few. Yeah, we're losing a few in a row now. We might be losing that uh, hard edged, hard nosed, grinded out hockey mentality here as we've lost. Well, three or four in a row now. Don't be surprised if what we saw here in the first couple months, yeah, in the first couple months is just a bit of a run on a little adrenaline, if you know what I mean. All right, so the end of the first month is here. Let's do some scouting. Uh, you know what? There's another There's another forward in uh, Sweden. There you go. Uh, is it a forward or defenseman? It's a defenseman. Killington. He's actually a really good player, so I'm going to scout him a little bit here too. All right, so that's the end of the month, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys think about my mentality when it comes to this year. All right, do you feel like I've got the right idea? Do we need to make any changes right now? Or is that something we can leave until the deadline? Remember, at the deadline, we can trade for any player we want. But we're going to keep things realistic. So I'd like to keep reds for greens, if you guys know what I mean. So down in the comments section below, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like the video, please. It helps me know exactly what kind of content you guys want to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And at TargetOn18, guys, it's in the bottom left corner. I don't know how nobody sees that. But down in the bottom left corner, there is my Twitter handle. You know what it is. So follow me on Twitter, at TargetOn18. Until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out on the ice.